So I made these like flower bags from old curtains the other day and I made two of them but then I totally forgot to add my content labels. I don't know why, I just totally like skip my mind. So now I'm gonna just quickly add those because I wanna actually gift one of them. The other one I'm gonna keep for now but the other one I wanna gift and I need to make sure it's in like perfect condition. I'm just gonna quickly unpick the seam so I can just slide it in and do like a quick stitch and then it's good. Also like there's something going on with my stick and I feel like a little sick. So I recently decided that I want to try this whole like influencer marketing situation. <laughs> Never done it before, don't know if it really works. We'll talk about it. I just want to see for myself because I just want to try everything to try and get my brand out there, especially in the Netherlands. That's kind of my focus first, of course, because I'm here. Two girls that actually responded to me. One lives in Maastricht. She's more of a smaller like, influencer Gen Z, just to see like what that market is like. And I gifted her a flower bag. And then the other one is this girl in Amsterdam, but it's more like a young professional. So she also has like a huge following. I actually love her style. So I was really excited when she emailed back, well, her agent see not her <laughs> i just kind of want to see like if this works or not so we're gonna send the girl in amsterdam name is holly i want to send her a jacket i said flower bag in the email because it's more of a unique item and people i feel like are more likely to say yes to that because it's something they don't have so i'm just gonna of course give her a flower bag but because i love her style and she has a big reach i'm just gonna gift her a jacket as well which this is the part I'm not so sure about because like all these influencers, they get so many gifts from brands. They don't need it. Like it's just free stuff. And like I put a lot of work and time and money into these products. But at the same time, like if they're just sitting at home for me, they're not even selling or getting eyes on them, like new eyes or anything either. You know, like I need to find a way to put my product in front of people. So I guess like that's the investment in it. Like, yeah, I feel a little sad to just give it away but I guess the exchange I'm hoping for is potential customers to follow me and then purchase from me later on. I wanted to gift her this jacket. I'm obsessed with it but I think it fits her style the most out of all the jackets that I have and then I want to give her a flower bag like I said I would but I don't know. I kind of want to do something that matches the jacket so she could wear it together ideally but the red is too like too bold but I have a burgundy one I think would be nice. I also feel a lot of brands don't talk about like influencer gifting like the influencers say like oh gifted but no one talks about like the brands giving the gifts if it even has a good return on it i don't know like nobody really talks about it they just the influencers get the gifts they do like a short post about it but like what's the result nobody talks about the result so if i have results i will let you know and i'll tell you <laughs> i think this matches better it's more tonal than this this is like aggressively red so yeah let's gift her these two items Packages are done. I'm gonna send these both tomorrow. And if there is any update on them, I will let you know. Actually, I will let you know either way. If nothing happens or if something happens, I'm going to make this a size smaller. I made this one last week. If you saw my video last week, this is going to be my new summer top and I'm still loving it. <laughs> the only thing is it came out like a little larger than I thought. I feel like this one could actually be a size M. So I want to grade it down, making it a size S 
I want to keep it in the like alpha sizing, meaning like I want to use letters to size, so extra small to extra large, because it's pretty flexible. It's tied up front and then slits on the side, so it's not very restricting on like how big the breast size is versus the waist and the hip. I need to grade the pattern actually to a size small and then make it and I'm just gonna then compare what it fits like and maybe wear it for a couple days just to see how I feel in it. Let's get on with it. You don't know what grading is? It's just like, I don't even know how to explain. Mathematically reducing or increasing your pattern piece up or down to make another size. So it's pretty like technical and super exact because you have to move it. Like I still grade in Imperial because that's just how I learned. So I'm moving everything like by an eight, like an eight up, an eighth to the side. So it's quite exact and certain parts need to move more than others versus like the neck moves less than and your underarm that moves more so i'm grading i really need to like concentrate and focus but i'm gonna just pull up my notes again to refresh myself at least this time i only have to grade two pieces the front piece and the back piece the jacket i had to grade so many pieces because it's the whole outside and then the whole lining so at least this one will go fast i'm looking through my grading folder this is all my grading notes i've had ooh, before from all the other things i've done for the shirt i'm doing i just put it in my sketchbook actually like this is a sketch for me last time and on the next side I always do like my construction notes uh, and this time I just did my grading notes here first things first though I am so hungry my stomach is growling so I'm gonna just quickly pop downstairs and have lunch and then when we come back we'll grade the new piece and cut it out of some fun fabric there's a fabric i've been really wanting to use for a summer top but i wanted to wait till i had the like design down pat before i even like cut into it and i really want to do it for this one Grading is done, this is the small. But the fabric I wanna use is this like crinkly green one that I have. Oh, I'm so excited by it. This one, this is it. This is the one I wanna use for this. I realize now that I don't actually have any like green thread. The closest color, bright yellow. I mean more like the color that works the best with it because I feel like white is too stark and it kind of has like that yellow kind of acid in it. So I think I'm just gonna do kind of like a contrast stitching with yellow. But if I really like it with this fabric, I think I might actually have to go buy a better green thread. See how this goes. Oh, I kind of like it with the yellow. This is it with the like bright yellow stitching. I kind of like. Since you just watched me sew a whole one of these tops last week, I'm not gonna make you watch me sew another one. So I'm gonna quickly whip this up. I'll come back to you when it's done and we'll see how it fits. This is the reveal of the final green top. 
not too bad, I would say. It went a little funny here because of the wrinkles and crinkles, but I would say overall, the size that I just made, this being an S, would be a perfect size S. Like, yeah. I'm happy with how it fits. I'm happy with the length. I think this is good. I don't know if I'm gonna make this in other sizes because the crinkles can be a little wonk like this. So I think I might just leave this fabric for another project in the future. But for the size, which is what I was actually making it for, just to see if this was a good size small, I would say yes. One more thing I want to do today, the sun is going down, so that's why it got a little dark. I want to just kind of organize fabric for flower bags. I need to cut out a bit more and I really want to get that going because in April, like April 1st or 2nd, I think it's on a Monday, I want to do the small flower bag restock and I have currently zero online. <laughs> they are all gone, so I need to get on this. I have, I think, like six cut, but I need more. I need more. I have these fabrics and this one. This one was a tablecloth. <laughs> I think I want to keep this as a top because it's just white. Oh, but it will also maybe want a white flower bag. <sighs> this is tough. Okay, maybe I'm not so decisive. <laughs> okay, this, not a flower bag. This, I want as a top. This, I need to think about this top top of course oh for sure a flower bag for sure this for sure a flower bag i know that i don't want to make a top out of it and this i'm really actually stuck on people ask for floral bags a lot for floral bags for flower bags no how is it floral or flower bags but apparently this is a popular ask so maybe i should do this in flower bags so maybe this one could also be a flower bag as well. Maybe this has a top too. Oh, I'm just, I'm hoarding. Just start with this pile, see how many I get and see how far I get. Cause I do have to sew them all as well. And then we'll go from there. And if I need to make more again in the future, at least I know there's some fabrics from this pile that I can make. Okay, it's settled. That's uh, we got a plan. So this week is cutting and starting to sew all the flower bags and we're just gonna go from there. A typical studio day for me.